Democrats have turned into an angry mob. You saw that today with the screaming and the shouting, not from the 200 people or less that were, you know what? Those people, they couldn't fit in the front row. Look what we have here tonight. They threw away and threw aside every notion of fairness, of justice, of decency, and of due process. Nobody's seen anything like it. But each of you will have a chance in just four weeks to render your verdict on the Democrats' conduct at the ballot box. Got to vote. Got to vote. On November 6th, you will have the chance to stop the radical Democrats, and that's what they've become, by electing a Republican House and a Republican Senate. We will increase our majorities. We need more Republicans. We need more Republicans. Over the past few weeks, every American has now seen the profound stakes in the upcoming election. You now see it. We have been energized. We have been energized. If Democrats are willing to cause such destruction in the pursuit of power, just imagine the devastation they would cause if they ever obtained the power they so desperately want and crave. You're going to have other Supreme Court justices, places to be filled. It could be three. It could even be four. It could be a lot. And if you allow the wrong people to get into office, things could change. They could change, and they could change fast. And we're not going to let that happen. We can't let that happen. It can go very quickly. It can change very fast. We can't let that happen. You don't hand matches to an arsonist, and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob, and that's what they've become. The Democrats have become too extreme and too dangerous to govern. Republicans believe in the rule of law, not the rule of the mob. We're doing a hell of a job of doing it. We're draining the swamp, and we want to defeat the Democrats conclusively. Under Republican leadership, America is booming. America is thriving. America is winning because we are finally putting America first. We are putting America first. Yesterday, it was announced that unemployment has fallen to 3.7% percent, the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years, lowest in 50 years. We've created nearly 600,000 jobs in the last three months alone. Think of that, 600,000. And if I ever said that when I was campaigning, the fake news media would go and say, impossible. They are fake. Manufacturing confidence is at an all-time high. Confidence, very important, all-time high. And we have the best 
economy in the history of our country. The best. We're taking care of our veterans, protecting our great seniors, and rebuilding America's military might like it hasn't been built before. But if Democrats take control, they will try to plunge our country into gridlock, poverty, and chaos, and that's what's going to happen. It can change. The Democrats want to significantly raise your taxes. Essentially, they want to impose socialism, Venezuela. Dismantle law enforcement and eliminate our borders. They want to have nice, open borders. No way. The Democrats have become the party of crime. They have become the party of crime. Think of it. Republicans are the party of law and order and justice. And we really have become, even more so than ever before, the party of opportunity and wealth. And that's what's happening. We're creating wealth for everybody. Whether it's small businesses, big businesses, or people wanting great jobs, that's what's happening. And you know, wages right now, for the first time in 19 years, wages are going up for people. And jobs, you can choose the job you want for the first time. Many years. So we are thrilled to be joined by a number of your state's terrific Republican leaders. And I have to tell you that I wasn't supposed to be here because, you know, this is such a big day. This is such a big day. I was supposed to call you. They said, do you mind calling Chris Kobach and Steve Watkins? Do you mind telling them that because of the fact that we are today getting this great, great, talented, wonderful Supreme Court judge. They said, could you call the people of Kansas and tell them we won't be able to make it tonight? I said, I don't have the courage to do that. I don't have, I don't have the courage. I said, I don't have the courage. They called me, they said, sir, we're signing the next United States Supreme Court justice. They always say, you've heard it, the biggest thing a president can do, they've always said, is Supreme Court justice, the biggest. And some have had none. We've had two in less than two years, I guess, you know. Some have had none. Some presidents have had none. But it's the biggest thing you can do. So they said, sir, do you mind canceling Kansas tonight? We're going to have it. I said, no way I'm canceling Kansas. No way. No way. I had that phone working. I had that phone working on that plane. I had that signature going on the plane. And here we are. And by the way, you think this crowd inside is big? You ought to see the crowd that's outside. We just put up big movie screens, but I think this is better, right? This is better. I want to thank Congressman Roger Marshall. Been a great friend. Roger's been a great friend and a great friend also, Ron Estes. Great person. They helped us so much with the tax cuts, with regulation cuts, with so many things that we've passed that nobody thought would be possible, would be possible. So thank you both very much. Where are they? Where are they? Thank you very much, fellas. Thank you. Fantastic. And also, I want to thank somebody who's done a fantastic job, GOP Chair Kelly Arnold. Kelly. 
Great job. You know why a great job? Because we won this state by a lot, right? And after what I just did for you with the new deal with Mexico and Canada, I think we should double it up. I think we should double it up. USMCA, USMCA. I refuse to call it NAFTA because NAFTA was such a horrible deal. You didn't even realize it, what that was. So 50,000 plants and factories emptied out, millions and millions of jobs lost. So we negotiated a new deal, and this, uh, I said, there's no way I'm calling it NAFTA 2. <laughs> USMCA, and we opened up, we opened up agriculture, we opened up dairy, we opened up a lot of things, and everybody's really happy. I don't know how they're doing in the other places, but they're really happy. So congratulations. Congratulations. And we also signed a great new deal with South Korea. And the farmers are going to be benefiting there, too. And we're working right now. They want to make a deal. I said, you're not ready to make a deal yet. We're working on a deal with China. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Look, they've been hitting us hard for a long time. We've never had a president that did anything about it. $500 billion a year. That's a big one they take out. So right now, we're doing extremely well with China. And let's see what happens. Maybe we'll do it. And if we don't, we're going to be in an even better position. You understand that. So we'll see. I also want to thank a man of incredible integrity and class, your governor, Jeff Collier. Jeff. Jeff, where's Jeff? Jeff is a great guy. He's doing a really incredible job, and thank you, Jeff. But I didn't know Jeff. I told Jeff, I said, nothing personal. I just didn't know you. Because when I back Chris, and you have one hell of a governor, and I think we have to talk about bringing him down to Washington or something. We talked about it. Okay. Great governor. Great man. We're also joined by Kansas Attorney General Derek Schmidt. Thank you. And President of the Kansas State Senate, Susan Wagel. Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. I'm also proud that our campaign manager, Brad Pascal, you know Brad, Brad Pascal. Where's Brad? Guy's like seven feet tall, so you can't miss. Thank you, Brad. Our chief our chief, you know him, our chief operating officer, Mike Glasner. Do you know Michael? He's fantastic. Right from the beginning. Thank you, Michael. They all come from Kansas. They all come from Kansas. I guess that's how we win. You get from Kansas, you win. Listen. Along with our amazing Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. He is doing a great job. He's headed over to North Korea. This guy travels more. You got to do that to be a good one. You know, if you're home a lot, you're not doing much of a good job. We're doing a great job with North Korea. We're doing a great job with everybody. Mike Pompeo from Kansas. Great man. And also here with us tonight is your next Lieutenant Governor, Wink Hartman. Thank you, Wink. Thank you, Wink. So a man that's been with me from the beginning, He's tough, he's strong, and I hated that he ran because I would have loved to have brought him into my administration. In fact, if he loses, I'll bring him into my administration in two seconds. I hope he loses because I want him so badly, but don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I was angry when he did it. I said, don't do it. Sir, I want to be 
the governor of Kansas. I love my people. I said, go do it. Go do it. I was very unhappy. I was very, very unhappy. I said, go do it. Then he went out and he's been winning and he's been doing an incredible job. But he does. He loves this state. He loves this state so much. And I want to introduce the next governor of Kansas, Chris Kobach. Well, let me just say on behalf of all of Kansas, President Trump, welcome to Trump country. It is such an honor and a blessing to have President Trump here in the city where I grew up to support my campaign in the state that we all love. And I want to give President Trump credit for something really important. It's something he and I have worked together on. We've worked for, on a number of things, but the most important is stopping illegal immigration. I'm so glad that America has a president who gets it and knows that illegal means illegal. I want to tell you a quick short story about illegal immigration. I began working on this issue when I was an advisor to John Ashcroft at the time of 9-11. I was there during 9-11 and we all remember how the world changed. But let me tell you something that you may not know. All 19 hijackers came into this country legally on temporary visas. Five of them became illegal mostly by overstaying their visas. Four of those five were stopped by state and local law enforcement for speeding violations. They were illegally in the country at the time but the cops didn't know it and so they, could, they didn't make an arrest even though they could have if they'd had that information at their fingertips. Now get this, Three of, those four pi the four, three of those four illegal aliens that they could have arrested were pilots. So if they had made those arrests, they could have stopped 9-11 from happening. Those numbers have shaped my career. The gravity of that has never left me, and I will not, and I know President Trump will not, allow our immigration system to be used again as a weapon to harm the American people. Stopping illegal aliens is not just about jobs, it's not just about crime, it's about our nation's security and that comes first. And illegal immigration is an issue in this, in this campaign for governor. Did you know that my opponent, Laura Kelly, voted to continue allowing sanctuary cities in Kansas? She did. She did. Look it up. It's in the roll call vote. When I am governor, God willing, sanctuary cities will end in this state. <laughs> Laura Kelly also voted to allow illegal aliens to continue getting welfare benefits. So while we're struggling to pay our electricity bill, to pay higher taxes, we're meanwhile giving taxpayer dollars to illegal aliens. Is that fair? No. It's time to stop illegal aliens from getting taxpayer dollars. It's time to put Kansans first, not illegal aliens.
There's another big issue. There's another big issue that President Trump and I are, have both been concerned about. Voter fraud. Because of the law that I drafted and the Kansas legislature passed, Kansas now has the most secure election laws in America. <laughs> photo ID creates trust in our elections. If you need a photo ID to cash a check or to buy the kind of Sudafed that works, you probably ought to need one to go put, cast a vote in an election. And proof of citizenship, too. Proof of citizenship. Every time an alien votes, every time an alien votes, it cancels out the vote of a U.S. citizen. You know, the Democrats and their socialist friends, they claim they care about voter cancellation or voter suppression, but they don't care about U.S. citizens' votes being canceled out. It's time for other states to require proof of citizenship, too, just like Kansas. One more, one more topic, taxes. Thanks to President Trump, our federal tax burden is much lower. But in Kansas, our state taxes are the highest in the region. It's time to cut our state taxes here in Kansas. When I am governor, the first bill that I want to sign is one that passes along the Trump tax windfall to the people of Kansas, $137 million. And on top of that, you've got thousands of Kansans being taxed out of their own home because of property tax appraisal increases. They can't afford to live in the home they wanted to retire in. When I am governor, we will put a 2% cap on property tax appraisal increases. To put it simply, I want to do for Kansas what President Trump has done for America. We've got a big election, a big election ahead of us on November 6th. It's a point of choice, not for only, only for America, but a big decision for Kansas. Tonight, President Trump is here calling on us to get out there and vote, calling on us to stand up. The time is now to stand up for the proven principles and constitutional rights that have made this country great and made this country strong. And the time is now that we must reject the political correctness that the progressives and the left are constantly putting on us. And stand up, and stand up for the time-tested values of hard work, faith in God, and the United States Constitution. Thank you, President Trump, for making America great again. And now we're going to make Kansas great again. Thank you, Chris. What a job he did for me, I'll tell you. What a job he did. He's going to be a great governor. He will do the job for you. He is going to be a great, great governor. He is a tireless champion for border security. He'll fight for you every single day. He doesn't stop. He'll protect your family. He'll protect your children. Now, his far-left opponent is Laura Kelly. Voted to raise your taxes. 
and she supports giving public benefits to the illegal aliens that pour in. And Laura Kelly earned an F. I never even heard of an F. An F rating from the NRA. An F. I assume that means that she's not too big on the Second Amendment. Is that what, is that, what that means? Everybody get out and vote for my friend Chris Kobach on Election Day, please. Finally, I want to introduce another terrific Republican candidate, your next congressman. Get out and vote. I need him in Washington. Steve Watkins. Steve is a great veteran. He's a patriot and a proud West Point graduate. That means he's very smart. Steve, come on up. <laughs> Kansans can do anything. I'm proof of that. I grew up a couple miles away, and here I am standing next to the leader of the free world. And not just any leader, a truly great one. You see, when I left, when I left Kansas, I went, and among other things, I spent eight years in war zones. Eight years with my boots in the sand of Iraq and Afghanistan. Eight years. And in all that time, all that time, I really just learned a couple things. I know for sure that I have seen the devil. But I have also seen fighters. Donald Trump is a fighter. He fights, he fights for America first. He fights to keep our borders secure. He fights for jobs. He fights those at or approaching retirement. He is a fighter, and we are so honored to have him here in Kansas. He moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Yes! He likes... He likes appointing pro-Constitution judges to the bench. And he is tough on China, Iran, and North Korea. Two other things, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh. Now, Kansas, Kansas, you know, might be a little partial, but just think of how much more he could have accomplished if he were a Kansan. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for all that you do for Kansas and for America and for this world. We're so glad you're here. Thank you, sir. Good man. And a vote for Steve is a vote for me and our agenda to make America great again. You know that agenda. A lot of hats. A vote for Steve's opponent. His name is Paul Davis. He's not good. He's not good. You know that. Is a vote for a radical agenda of Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. and the legendary Maxine Waters. 
here in Kansas, his opponent, Paul Davis, voted time after time to raise your taxes and fees. And he voted to give public benefits to illegal aliens. Not good. If you want to stop Nancy Pelosi from becoming Speaker of the House, Nancy, Nancy Pelosi, whoa, you better get out and vote for Steve Watkins, please. A majority of House Democrats have already sponsored a socialist takeover of health care. The Democrats' plan would eviscerate Medicare and eliminate Medicare Advantage for 20 million seniors. We want to protect Medicare. We will, as Republicans, protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it and paid for it. And we will always protect Americans with pre-existing conditions. We will take care of our great Americans with pre-existing conditions. Today's Democrats have embraced radical socialism and open borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. Folks, you don't have a country. Every single Democrat in the U.S. Senate has signed up for the open borders, and it's a bill. It's called the Open Borders Bill. What's going on? And it's written by, guess who? Diane Feinstein. <laughs> Remember the leaking, right? The leaking Diane Feinstein. Did you leak? Did you leak, Diane? Diane, did you? No, 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 I, uh, no. No! I, I, I didn't. I don't think. Wait. Did we leak? No. No, he said no. No, we didn't leak. Oh, okay. Was that the worst body language you've ever seen? Was that the worst? No, I, I didn't leak. I didn't leak. No, she didn't leak. That's what you're dealing with. If the Democrats' bill ever becomes law, a tidal wave of drugs and crime would pour into our nation like never, ever before. Democrats also support deadly sanctuary cities that release violent predators and bloodthirsty killers like MS-13 into our communities. Republicans believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding Americans, not criminal aliens. And Republicans stand proudly with the brave men and women of ICE, Border Patrol, and law enforcement. They want to defund ICE. Can you believe it? You know how tough ICE is? When MS-13 sees ICE coming, they say, let's get out of here. But you know what? They can't, because they get caught. They get thrown, and they get thrown the hell out of the country. They can't. They don't like that. The Democrats want to get rid of ICE. And these are great Americans. By the way, ICE, great Americans. They happen to be tough people. I think we need some tough people. They're tough. MS-13 doesn't like ICE, and that's why I like ICE. But they really are. They're great Americans. They love our country, and they're not treated properly. They're not treated properly. I've seen it in Long Island. They go into a community. I grew up in that vicinity. I know every community out there. And they go into these communities, and these are rough, rough people, MS-13. How they even come in, and we stop them at the border, but there's so many here from before us from before us. And our laws are so bad, and we're getting them changed. It's tough. That's why we need more Republicans. But they come in, and Long Island, we send ICE, and they get in there, and they get them out, and it's like we're liberating a town. In this day and age, it's like in a war where, uh, you know, you're a, a foreign invader, a foreign invader finally is being taken out. They're liberating a country or liberating a city or a town. These people are liberating these towns.
And you know the story, and you've heard it, and it's all over. They cut people up because they don't want to use bullets. It's too fast, and it's not painful enough. And then when I said, animals, Nancy Pelosi said, how dare you speak that way about a human being? How dare you? Right? This woman just said it to me. She screamed out the word animal. So how dare you call them? They're human beings. They're not. These are animals, folks. These are animals. And we need law enforcement. And we need ICE. And we need Border Patrol. These are great people. And if your community has a problem, don't worry about it. Just give us a call. We'll take care of it. Democrats are also fighting to give welfare and free health care to illegal aliens. Paid for by you, the American taxpayer. Thank you very much. Republicans believe that the public benefits must be protected for the truly needy Americans. Americans that need help, not illegal aliens. If you want safety, if you want a border, if you want America to remain a sovereign, great country, then you must organize, mobilize, register, and vote Republican. We need more Republican votes. This election is about safety, and it's also about prosperity. Since the election, we have created over 4.2 million new jobs and lifted almost 4 million Americans off of food stamps. And we've added nearly one half million manufacturing jobs. Think of that. If I ever said that during the camp, look how many, oh man, that you are getting more and more people back there. Look how many reporters. Look. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. Wow. You know what I call it? I call it the Academy Awards. That's the Academy Awards. You know, we're doing great. Our new polls just came out. I had a poll, Rasmussen, 51 or 52. They don't report that. They never report. But you know, and it's much higher than that because some people, I don't know if I'm happy about this, they say when they don't want to talk about it, that means they're voting for Trump. I don't know. Am I supposed to be thrilled? But we'll take it, right? We'll take it. That's what happened in 2016. A lot of people didn't want to talk about it. And the pollsters push it down, you know, okay, throw it. But now they learn. They learned their lesson. When they don't talk, they're Trump voters. All action. All action, no talk. African American unemployment has reached its lowest level in recorded history. African-American poverty has reached its lowest rate ever recorded. By the way, by the way, can you imagine during the debate, if I have those stats, the best unemployment number ever for African-Americans, best in terms of poverty ever in history for Africa? How do you win? How do you beat us on that? It's only habit. It's habit. Because for a hundred years, African Americans have gone with Democrats, but now they're changing and they're changing fast and they're coming with us. Thank you, Kanye West. Thank you, Jim Brown, big Jim Brown. Thank you, Iron Mike. I could go through, we have so many people. Big Jim Brown, we could use him right now in the NFL, right? Great people. Hispanic American and Asian American, likewise, their unemployment rates have also reached all-time historic lows, the lowest. And women's unemployment just fell to 3.6%, the lowest rate in 65 years. And we are, as of right now, 
the world's number one producer of crude oil and natural gas, energy. Number one. Number one. And since I took office, the value of Americans' mutual funds and pension funds has increased by $2.7 trillion. That's your money. That's your money. And your 401ks, you all look like a bunch of geniuses. Thank you, Donald, very much. You're all great investors, right? You're all great investors. That's okay. We've picked up 11, I was saying 10, I was saying 7. We picked up now 11.7. Larry Kudlow said it to me the other day. He said, sir, you're a little low on that number. I said, really? I was using 10 trillion dollars. It's now 11.7 trillion dollars in worth. 11, you know what that is? And China was catching us rapidly before I became president. And right now, we are going so fast. We are the fastest developing country in the world. Can you believe that? Wow. Fastest in the world. And that's why I say we have a midterm coming up, an election. Historically, whoever's president, I don't know why this works, but whoever's, I guess people get complacent. You know, hey, we just won the presidency. Now, two years later, we have an election, so they're complacent. And then we always win in the next one, which is, as you know, the presidential election. We always so far, I'm dreaming of those candidates. I see those candidates before my eyes. Every night before I go to sleep, sometimes while I'm sleeping, I love them so much. Cory Booker. Pocahontas, Pocahontas. I've got more Indian blood in me than Pocahontas, and I have none. I mean, sadly. I have none, but I have more than she does. They said to her, why do you say you're of Indian heritage? Well, my mother told me I have high cheekbones. That's the answer. Do you have any documentation? No, we don't. Oh, I see. You have high cheekbones. Well, I have high cheekbones, too. Hey, maybe I'm an Indian, and I'm going to do very well. But think of it. This is her reason. The whole thing has been a fraud, but that's okay. You know what? I, I want to be careful. I'm taking out so many of these people. I'm hitting them so hard that they're disappearing. And I don't want to do that. Because I may get somebody that's actually good to run against me, and that would not be good. I'll take out all the easy ones, and maybe I'll get stuck with somebody that's actually good, but I don't see any on that side. Well, sleepy Joe Biden, who who ran for president two or three times. You know, they say only twice. I think I remember a third time in there. But he had 1% with an arrow pointing left. That means 1% or less. And then Obama took him off the trash heap. Well, he's one of the people. Remember, he challenged me to a fight. I'd like to take him behind the barn. I'd love that. That would be. That wouldn't last long. That would not last long. That wouldn't last long. Go like this. He's down, and he'll never get up. He'll never get up. He will never get up. No, I got to leave their candidates alone. Somebody actually said you're hitting these candidates really hard. Here's a non-candidate, you know, Danang Dick. He's a Danang Dick. That's Blumenthal. He talked about. When I was in Da Nang province in Vietnam, and I was fighting up the hill, and men are going left and right of me. They're dying. They're being struck by bullets. But I went back to their rescue. I went back, and I got them.
And then I made a second attempt, and bullets are going left and right and over my shoulders, and they're hitting my men. And I used to think, wow, this guy's a pretty brave guy. And then I found out he's a fraud. He never was in Vietnam. And he stopped campaigning because there was no way you could win. No way. And because it's Connecticut, where I guess only a Democrat, can you believe this? That's why Connecticut's such a mess right now. Only a Democrat wins. You got to see it's a mess. General Electric just moved out. That doesn't help. But Don Ang Dick. And then I see him yesterday talking about a man who's number one at Yale, has like this perfect record, the most incredible record. One of the reasons I picked him, he's like a perfect person. And Don Ang Dick, who, who said he was a great war hero and he never saw the country. This wasn't like saying, hey, I was in the army. This, was, this, is, this is a guy that said he was charging up Da Nang. Da Nang province, right? Da Nang province. He's up that hill and he's taking bullets left and right. And he never saw the place. He was in the reserves, though, remember that. And he said, I demand honesty. This is true. Exact words. I demand honesty, integrity, and I demand that there's no lying going around. And I'm saying, hey, wait a minute, is that, that's the guy that lied about in the worst, in the history of our country, if you look at it, he lied. And this is one of the people. How bad? And then you have the Feinstein, and you have all the others, and you look at what's going. You don't want those people in office, folks. You've got to have great Republicans. And compare that with what you've seen with John Cornyn, who asked that great question to Diane and got her a little off base, like, you know, John Cornyn of Texas, and Lindsey Graham, who did such a great job. Right? Did a great job. How good was Lindsey? How good was Lindsey? And you know what? He was speaking from the heart. He was speaking. And by the way, took a week, but that extra week was a great thing because it showed no corroboration, no nothing. No, by the way, no nothing. How good was Senator Susan Collins yesterday, really? Really? Great. And Chuck Grassley. I'll tell you what, Chuck was great. He's got to be very happy with what we did on trade, right? Chuck from Iowa, great state. And Mitch McConnell, how good. How good. He was tough and smart. He was great. He worked hard. And we got ourselves the finest legal mind, one of the finest human beings. And again, what his family took, the, the horror that they had to endure by these people like Blumenthal and Cory Booker, who was a disaster as the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. What they had to take was a disgrace. The only reason to vote Democrat is if you're tired of winning, right? <laughs> tired of winning. We want to win, win, win. We never get tired of winning. After years of rebuilding other nations, we are finally rebuilding our nation. You see what's happening. And I just left the United Nations last week. And I can tell you, and everybody else can tell you, and even the fake news can tell you, America is respected again. To create more jobs and rising wages, Republicans passed the biggest package of tax cuts and reforms in American history by far. We also passed Veterans Choice, 44 years. 
giving our veterans the right to see a private doctor. And we pay for it. So they don't have to wait in line for 25 days, 38 days, 14 days, 6 days. They go out and they see a private doctor. They get themselves a good doctor. We pay the bill. It's frankly so simple, but it took 44 years to get it done. We got it done. I'm good at getting things done. I'm good at getting things done. And we also passed, this is 45 years, the VA accountability law to ensure anyone who mistreats our veterans will be held accountable. You are fired. Get out. And we've secured a record $700 billion, and the next year, $716 billion to rebuild our military and to give our brave warriors their largest pay raise in almost a decade. In my direction, the Pentagon is now working to create the sixth branch of the American Armed Forces, the Space Force. They're very serious stuff. And that's happening quickly. It's very serious. That's where it's at. You know, you have to know where it's at. Doesn't sound right, but it's right. That's where it's at. Both defense and offense, that's where it's at. I withdrew the United States from the horrible, one-sided Iran nuclear deal. You know, before I became president, I looked at what was happening with Iran. They were taking over the Middle East. They were taking Syria. They were taking Yemen. They were going into Iraq. They were taking everything. Now. They just want to make it. They just want to say they have riots in every city. Since I took over that operation, that horrible, horrible deal that was a think of it. The previous administration gave Iran one hundred and fifty billion dollars. And even crazier, they gave them one point eight billion dollars in cash, cash. Aeroplanes, aeroplanes full of cash. In fact, I got in. I said, does the President of the United States actually have the power to give away $1.8 in cash? You know what the answer is? It's actually no. They don't. What they did there is a disgrace. They gave them $1.8 in order to have a terrible deal. Well, that was a hostage. They paid a billion eight. They paid a billion eight for hostages. Can you imagine? And we got our hostages back from North Korea, right? Nothing. Zero. And we have a good relationship. And who knows what happens, but I think good things happen. No more missile testing, no more rocket testing, no more nuclear testing. We got the remains of our great, great heroes from 75 years ago back. And they keep coming back. And we got our hostages back. And good things are happening over there. You know what I always say? It's deals. Just before we signed the deal with Canada and Mexico, great deal. I said, who knows? I never like to say, who could you say? It's a deal. Who knows? I like to do it. It takes all the pressure off. Who knows? With North Korea, who knows? But I think we're doing very well, OK? The fake news says, why aren't you going faster? I said, listen, I just got back three months ago, right? I was there with Kim Jong-un. I was there three months ago. Chairman Kim, they say, why aren't you going faster? I said, what have people done for 75 years? 75. This is three months. And one of the anchors said, why has the president given away so much? And I said, what have I given? I haven't given anything. We got our hostages back. If 
for nothing, out of respect. Right? We got our remains stopped. We got the testing all stopped, including the nuclear testing. I, I said, tell me, what have we given? Well, uh, uh, you, uh, you agreed to meet. Oh, that doesn't cost me very much. I agreed to meet. I like to meet. I like to meet. What the hell do we lose by meeting? I asked the previous administration. Now, that's what I gave away. I agreed to meet. Can you believe it? These people are sick. I agreed to meet. Can you imagine how well we'd do if we actually had fair press? Can you imagine that? No, could you imagine? Instead of fake news, I agreed to meet. I'm sorry, I agreed to meet. And then they said, right? You know, the rhetoric was extremely tough that first couple of months. And President Obama said, at my meeting with him, he said, the biggest problem we have by far is North Korea. They would have gone to war. Millions and millions of people would have been killed. Millions of people. And I said to somebody in their administration, have you ever talked? Have you ever agreed to meet? Have you ever, like, let's sit down and talk? Well, we haven't thought about Oh, I see. You'll go to war. You're not going to talk? We'll beat anybody. What we have now coming in, I'm telling you, it's the greatest power we've ever had, the greatest power in the world. Do you know why I have that? Because I don't want to use it. And when you have it, nobody's going to mess with us, okay? Nobody. I don't want to use it. Greatest power in the world. 716 billion. Greatest power in the world. But we're doing great. And we have recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. That's the other story I tell. That's the other story we tell. That's a big one. That's a big, big story. You know why? Because other presidents all said they're going to do it. Many, many presidents. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Then the pressure goes on them and they don't do it. And I see why. I don't blame them. Every leader called me up. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't do it. You know the story. I've refused to take their phone calls. I said, tell them I'll call them back on Thursday. Next week. And I'm signing like on Wednesday. Tell them I'm calling them back on Thursday. I look forward to speaking to them. Then I sign the deal, announce the deal. Then I call them back. Yeah, hi, how you doing? What's up? Well, we wanted to talk to you about Israel, but it's a little late. And the embassy, which was going to cost over a billion dollars, we built it for about 400,000, right? You know that, right? And the billion would have taken probably 20 years before you ever got to build it. And we took a piece of land that we owned, already owned. And it had a building on it. Okay, building. We fixed the building up a little bit. We took the big space in the corner. We used even Jerusalem stone, which is a very expensive era builder. Jerusalem stone is beautiful. How nice is that? And you know, Jerusalem stone in Jerusalem sounds about right. And we got it for the right price. And we built it for less than $500,000. Think of it. And we opened it. It's open now. We have our embassy. So we saved a billion dollars and 20 years. And we have our embassy. We could do that with hundreds of things. For years, you watched as your leaders apologized for America. And now you have a president who is standing up for America. We're standing up for your values. We're standing up for Kansas. And we're standing proudly. We are standing proudly for our great national anthem, right? And I just helped Canada and the NFL make a deal that they've been trying to make for years. Can you believe it? Canada was taking advantage of the NFL. The NFL couldn't get it done. It took me about two seconds because it's peony. It's pe you know, it's a lot of money, but it's not compared to corn and crops and dairy and milk and cars and steel and everything else. It's peanuts. I say, you got to take care of it. It's not right because I want to help American companies. It took me like two minutes and we got it done. 
and I got a call from the commissioner of the NFL, and I thought he was calling me to ask me to stop haunting them about standing for the American flag and for our nation. And he didn't. He called me to thank me. He said, the previous administration could not get it done, and you got it done. We didn't even know you were trying to do it. Isn't that right? You got it done. So now they'll have a lot more money to give to their players, and their players will still hate me, but that's okay. Stand for our anthem, just as long as they stand. Just as long as they stand for our flag and our anthem, I don't care how they feel about me. But to continue our incredible momentum, you have to get your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, and get out and vote Republican. We need more people in D.C. We don't have enough. Vote to send Chris Kobach to the governor's mansion and vote to send Steve Watkins to Congress. We'll always vote for Trump. A vote for Republicans is a vote for lower taxes, less regulation, and more products made right here in the USA, finally, finally. We want it made here. It's a vote to respect our borders, respect our Constitution, and respect the heroes of law enforcement. And that's what they are, they're our heroes. And a vote for Republicans is a vote to reject the Democrat politics of anger and division and destruction and to reclaim America's true heritage and righteous destiny. We're losing that with these crazy loco people. To everyone in this room tonight, that's a lot of people, to every citizen watching across our land, this is your time to choose. It's a time to choose whether we turn backward to the failure and frustration of the past, or whether we continue forward into a future of American greatness. It's not up to the media. It's not up to the pundits. It's up to you to decide your fate. And remember this. What happened in 2016 and what's happening even more so now, I believe, because I produced, and people see I produced. One of them said he made a lot of promises and he actually produced more than he made promises. I mean, you know, think about it. I did. I did. You have the power with your vote to defend your family, your community, your country and everything we hold sacred and righteous and true. Loyal citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country, returning power to everyday great American patriots. The state of Kansas was settled by tough pioneer men and strong women who defied danger and braved the wilderness to build a beautiful life on the plains. Beautiful. 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 Strong women. Strong women. Strong. I'm sorry, fellas. Stronger than the men. I'm sorry, fellas. They didn't have a lot of money, they didn't have a lot of luxury, but they all had one thing in common. They loved their families, they loved their country, and they loved their God. These courageous patriots did not shed their blood, sweat and tears, so that we could sit at home 
while others try to erase their legacy and destroy our proud and great American heritage. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. We will not bend, we will not break, we will never give in, we will never give up, we will never back down, we will never surrender, and we will always fight on to victory. Because we are American and our hearts bleed red, white, and blue. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Kansas. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you very much for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. Look at that crowd, folks. Look at that crowd. Thank you so much again for choosing us as your stream of choice. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe. Click the notification bell. That way you get a heads up next time we go live. The crowd is huge, folks. The crowd is gigantic. Thank you so much. To everyone that shared the stream, smack the like button, the thumbs up button below the video. And also thank you to all those that uh, did a contribution on PayPal or on Super Chat. Thank you so much for helping us get to the next Trump rally. We love you guys. We hope you guys enjoyed the president and his. Uh, he did an amazing speech. And I hope to see you guys here next time. My name is Jen. I'm from Golden State Times. And I'll see you soon. Have a good night, everyone.